Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're having a great day. We have a really cool restoration project here for you today. An old, vintage, dare I say, antique military knife. We're going to be making it look a lot different. I always love when these types of projects come about. Just an honor to work on knives like this. This one belongs to Trent, a man who we've done work for before here on the channel. But uh, this belonged to Trent's grandfather. Trent inherited it. Let's have a look here. You can see it's not in bad shape. It's in pretty decent shape. We do have some light pitting on the blade where it looks like it might have grabbed onto a little bit of rust in the past that was cleaned off. We have some dark pitting, some scratching. We're going to see how much of that we can remove. You see there's a slight gloss there. We'll see how well we can do with that gloss. Pretty much all of our uh, our name here has been lost. So I'm not sure what was written here. I can't quite pick it out. I have a leather stacked handle which is mint. Really, really nice. I'm going to try not to touch that at all. But our bolster is wearing a lot of tarnish and a little bit of rust there. This, I gave it a little scratch right here because I was like, what... What material is that? Almost looks like a like a lead or something, but I believe it's just really, really tarnished aluminum. I think. I'm not sure. Maybe one of you guys could uh, could comment on that if you have a better idea. But we are going to do what we can with our tool set to bring this knife back. We're going to put a beautiful razor sharp edge on it. Going to do a little bit of uh, very light restoration work on the sheath here, just to bring it back up to nourish it, have it nice and clean and, uh, and healthy looking again to match our knife. Now I'm going to start here with a wire wheel. The type of wire wheel is fairly important. You want a fine wire with work like this. And I usually look for the brass wire wheels, which is what this is. It's actually pretty soft. Uh, uh, lots of times I'm doing work like this, my hands will, will dip into the wheel while we're running. And now I have tough calloused hands, but still my hands will dip in and it won't tear open my flesh. It might strip off a little bit of callus, but it won't actually tear me open. It's delicate enough for that. So that makes this really nice, like if you're working on a, a polished material or you're working on what might be aluminum. If this was a steel wire wheel and coarse, you would chew that aluminum up. But this can just brush it and polish it. You can see, see the amount of push I can get into that. Very nice. Now these initial passes are always most exciting. Because you never know what's going to happen. This is always a bit of trial and error. So like my first touch on here when we turn it on, we don't know what's under here. We don't know if we're going to get a polished finish. We don't know if we're going to strip off paint. We're going to find something scary. I don't know. Okay, a quick big bit of observation here to see what we have. So I stripped down that pommel there and it appears to be aluminum with I'm guessing what was heavy tarnish. Interesting, I've never seen that consistent and matte of a texture before. That little bolster, a little small guard there clean up nicely and I decided to try stripping the blade as well with uh, with the brass wheel and I was surprised by how much came out. I was, I was originally thinking that I'd use a, a scotch bright belt on my 2x72 grinder and we'd totally refinish this blade but the scotch bright belt tends to leave a texture a very even consistent texture which looks pretty but this knife looks like it had a nice polish when it was 
when it was created. So I don't want to damage this polish or, uh, or replace it, cover over it. So I think what we're going to do is try to give it a good buffing. Uh, buffing can do a lot of work. Now between your various types of buffing wheels and your various types of compounds, you can actually do a lot of work just with a buffing machine like this, just a single speed buffing machine. If you take a wheel like this, which is like a, a burlap wheel, a spiral sewn, like, so a very tight burlap wheel, it is very coarse and with some aggressive compound like a black compound, you can really chew off a lot of very light scratching and pitting and rust. Get yourself well on the way to a polish just with this wheel. Of course, you won't get an actual polish with this. You'll have to upgrade a few different, uh, few different grits, but it will get you a long ways. You can move to a spiral sewn flannel wheel, which is still really hard, and, but a little less aggressive because it's a, it's a soft material. Then you can move up to like an open, like a Canton flannel wheel like this, which is the same type of flannel or material that's in this, nice and fine, soft material, but it's only center sewn right here. So your flaps can actually open like so. So it's actually really soft when you're, when you're working, so it can blend all those scratches together. Of course, it doesn't sag open like this when it's, when it's spinning around at a high RPM. It stays, you know, nice and firm together, but it lets you really, you know, blend those edges and scratches in. You could use like a nice rouge or something like that with this um, and achieve some, uh, some really nice results. Start with that coarse one. Let's see how much material we can actually remove. How much of those little bit of pitting? I have a feeling that this will be coarse or aggressive enough to take away kind of what we need to take away without actually spoiling that nice polish on there. So have a look at what we have here now. Isn't that beautiful, nice and clean? And this looks great. I'm sure Trent would be more than happy with this. But you know, polish is an interesting thing. It's kind of like, uh, I think of the concept of diamonds. You know, when I go in a jewelry store and I look at a diamond, a cheap diamond versus an expensive diamond, and they talk about clarity and color and all that stuff, they all look like little clear shiny diamonds to me. I've never really seen, wow, look at the difference. And I'm guessing to most of your eyes, this is a beautiful, like, final polish. This is as polished as it gets. But there is a strong haze in here, and you can only really see it if I had this exact blade placed right here that had the final polish. We'll go ahead and take this up a notch right now. And I'll see if I can, like, match up the clips so I can go half screen and half screen. So you can see what it's like. We'll go to one of the softer wheels. We'll switch to a finer compound, the Rouge. And you'll see the difference, hopefully, in the clarity of this polish. <laughs> Now I'm hoping the lighting is about the same right here. But have a look at the color, the contrast in the polish, the contrast of the colors that you can see. Of course there's still 
because we didn't uh, didn't hand sand it to a perfect finish, you can still see in the certain way the light hits. You can see some of those little imperfections there, little graininess from uh, from scratches and things over over the years. And I'm guessing that'll be fine for the owner. We put a polish on that bolster as well. What do you think? It's quite a bit different from what we had a few minutes ago, isn't it? Now before we get to sharpening this beautiful knife, our last stage here, let me show you guys a problem. This is something that I see in a lot of knives that come in. Notice what's happening here. You have basically a recurve. The edge is beautiful, nice and straight coming on back, and then it dips in, and that is because it's been sharpened back. So this knife used to be down coming off of here, straight off, but we have lost some material here. So now I don't like you could I could just go ahead and sharpen this out around that round like that. And it would not look good. It would it would as you progress with this, it just this plunge line here gets worse and worse, uglier and uglier. And I don't like that situation. So you have two choices. Either mill off this recurve take this down or to put a small sharpening notch right here so there's a separation between your edge and sort of the guard or the plunge line back here right you want a distinction so that as you sharpen and this gets further and further down here there's somewhere to go otherwise you're going to lose more and more of your blade as time goes on so we're going to put a small little sharpening notch right here that'll look a lot better and solve all our problems we're going to use our dremel again for this this is a great job for the dremel i like these little diamond core bits so we'll just cut our notch right in there like that pretty simple this is hardened steel so you'll want something like a diamond bit and a steady hand There we go. Now we've separated here with the sharpening notch so we can carve out that ugly recurve there. Have a nice straight edge that will sit just ever so slightly. We'll also round this off, just smooth this off nicely. Now our final stage here sharpening is starting off with a 120 grit belt. Partly worn. I don't always start this coarse but I uh, need some reprofiling here. It's very dull. Not a lot of chips or rolls. But very dull, I haven't had a good edge on this knife in a while. We're also going to need to carve out, of course, that recurve there. So maybe I'll start there. Switch over to a partially worn 400. This will be our finished belt. So now we come over here to the Dremel station. Station. One of the stations. Who here has been long, around long enough 
to remember when my soul station was a $15 Walmart TV tray that was stood up in the driveway standing there on an extension cord with this little wobbly TV tray now we have stations <laughs> in a temperature controlled room thank you guys for your support we're going to use a brass little brass brush here again that brass wire nice and delicate see I can touch that I'm going to go ahead and our little rivets and our brass snap and everything here that's what tends to get really cruddy on these old sheaths so leather even just an oily uh, it looks great it looks great nice and rich but it's all the little crud and rust that gets in around those rivets just want to lightly clean them up There we go, we won't worry about a little scuffing on the leather. That can always be cleaned up. Even just a little bit of oiling we'll do later will pretty much make that disappear. The thing you do want to be careful with is the, is the thread, which can be restitched, but we don't want to have to restitch it if it's still good and intact like this stitching is. Give it a little wipe down with some cleaner. Hey, you guys who have been watching since the since the TV tray time will certainly know that I love mink oil on my leather projects. After cleaning up old leather, after freshening old leather to coat new leather it just is a beautiful treatment the leather seems to really like it gives an excellent amount of weather resistance to you coat your leather boots or your leather gloves with some mink oil and then you go and take a little water dropper or Take a little water in your hand and flick a little water on the project. You'll see it just sit there on the surface. And you tip it and watch the water bead off. That's what you want to help make it last. Our brush. Give it a good scrub, make sure that mink oil gets into all the pores, right into the material, into the stitching, all the little crevasses. If 
you're watching this video and you pronounce the word crevasse, I would appreciate it if you clicked off of my video. Went on to something else. Leatherworking and knives probably isn't your hobby if you pronounce it crevasse. Also, if you pronounce the word croissant, you might want to change the channel. Doesn't that look lovely and rich? A brass snap all polished up. Isn't that beautiful? Really happy with that. And it is done. Ready to ship back to you, Trent. I hope you're thrilled, buddy. You know, it's not perfect. There are some imperfections left in there, but in my experience, restorations like this are best not being perfect. You want that character. You wanna, you wanna clean it up and you wanna redo it as tribute or to respect the person who owned it. But to have it perfect and flawless would remove some of the, some of the very character that makes it that heritage piece. Isn't that gorgeous? Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little something. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if it's your first time here. I really hope to see you in another video.